If I say the phrase mental health to you, what does that mean? How would you define that in, in your own context? Um, well, I mean, to be honest with you, I've sort of I've gone through situations myself that, have, that surround the mental health situation, really. And, um, you know, I, I look at it on, on a number of things, um, you know, which, I mean, I think mine sort of stemmed from just coming around from sort of coming, coming to the end of my career with football and had a number of sort of situations that were going on, um, divorce. Um, but, you know, the mental health fact is, is for me, is, you know, for people that, that really do suffer with a number of things, you know, anxiety, uh, depression, and um, there's a lot that surrounds it, sort of the mental health situation, which is becoming more common and, and a lot more people are starting to come out and actually be you know, proud to actually say that they're not proud, but, you know, tr coming out and actually speaking about the situations that they have, because it's, it's not an easy position to be in, you know, people can just brand mental health as, as something are oh, we you know they're okay and and it, you know it's not it stems from deep down inside there's lots of problems that, that surround the whole situation which is it is difficult to deal with you said that it sort of built up to a head around the time where you were coming to to retire from football but did you ever feel that, that your mental health had suffered or that you were mentally struggling during your time as a player um i, d I did I, there was times where I probably wasn't aware of it as much because, you know, I just feel that, you know, in my era of football and, and my time of football, it was it was one of them where I think you actually didn't know what it was that you that you was going through. You know, the times where you did feel down and out, and there's times where you did stay in bed all day and, and not do much and and feel a little bit downbeat on yourself. And you know, I think a lot of them things do stem from from. From I think from past situations that maybe I've gone through with, you know, maybe mom and dad getting divorced, stuff like that, where we just don't see that sort of that pathway that ends up, you know, you do end up feeling into certain certain states, and you know, I think I look back as a youngster and you sort of don't, you try not to take them things on board, and your parents try not to put that big onus on you. Um, but you know, I think as a footballer, you know, I went through stages days day to days when we were off where I, I did feel that way and I probably didn't know a lot about it and I didn't know who to speak to and I didn't know what it was why I was feeling that way. When you look back to some of the players you'd have played with they'd have had something similar you know Gareth Southgate missed that penalty in Euro 96 and has spoken about how difficult he felt to deal with. Someone like David James was was almost a figure of fun at that time he was criticised a lot to just those two teammates, obviously Paul Merson was a teammate. Did you ever have conversations of, of how you were struggling with any of those guys or, or did they speak to each other, do you feel, about things like that? No, and I think I think what, one thing I'll, I'll say about that is you've got big, experienced heads in that change room that you could probably turn to. There's no doubt about it because they were quick enough to give you advice going out onto the football field. They were quick enough to give you advice moving forward, the good things, what to do. Um, but... To actually go and speak to, to one of them, them big high-profile footballers at the time, it, it would have been so difficult. I, I, I think it's difficult for any human being to open up about certain things that you've got issues about because, again, I'll go down to that, that judgmental factor and, and some people can give you right advice, some people can try and guide you and put you in the right direction, but other people can feel uncomfortable around it. Let's fast forward then t towards the end of your career and, and the irony, I guess, of, of where a lot of your problems stemmed from is that you thought you were doing the right thing with, with your money. You know, you're investing in houses and in theory, that should have been the springboard to, to having a, a comfortable life, but the world <laughs> didn't quite work that way. I put my trust in a lot of people that, that I felt was, was the right thing to do. You know, there was lots of people that were doing uh, uh, property investments, putting money into property for for future plans, which that that was my main aim. You know, I didn't gamble money away. Um, you know, I like to have a night out, but I wasn't doing anything that was was particularly wrong at all. Um, I just chose the possibly the wrong people to to let them <clears throat> deal with my financial situation and try and invest in the right way that 
I'd see my me and my family, you know, healthy and, and wealthy by the end of my career because I I'd, I'd put a lot of hard work into what I wanted to do as a footballer. And you know, when you do that and you earn that money and you know you feel that you've tried to do the right thing and it, it hasn't happened. You know, in my in my case, the, the property market crashed. You know, there was divorces. I was coming to the end of my career. It was it was all sort of tumbling down very very quickly, which you know it was hard to make the right decision, it was hard to, to get money out and it was hard to sell property. So you know, it, it was just, I was unfortunate that I'm not sitting here and this is my back garden, <laughs> to be honest. Um, you know, I've got a little a little square back garden. You moment, ruined but... <laughs> the illusion, we could have pretended it was your back well, garden. Well, you know, it's, 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 it's one of them, you know, I, I, it, it, it's happened and I've got, to, I've got to get over the fact of that. At the time, it was very, very difficult to sort of swallow. So talk me through your, your mental state at that time then. What are you feeling? What are the main emotions that, that you wake up trying to deal with every morning? Well, I think facing the world was, was one. Um, you know, I could, I could go through a, a number of things, you know. The, there was lots of press that I had to deal with. There was front page articles, you know, bankruptcy. Um, you know, my f football career was slowly spiralling away. I was in, I was kept getting injured. I was getting older. Um, I was fighting hard to get myself back fit. I was trying to get properties sold. I was trying to, I was just trying to do everything in my possession not to go through the bankruptcy situation and have my mum's house repossessed, have my house repossessed. Um, you know everything in my power that I could I could try and do, but you know it got to that stage where I, I was waking up and I, you, it, it was everything that was taken from me. From what I'd worked hard as a professional footballer, from a young man to to a, a, a middle-aged man, where you know I just I had nothing left. There was nothing left, and when I mean there was nothing left, you know. Everyone can say about you know having all the money in the world and not being happy. It wasn't about that. It was having everything taken away, and it took everything away from me inside because I get I gave up. I literally gave up. I I couldn't I couldn't just I couldn't get my head round that you know I'd invested a lot in properties to do the right thing, um, and it, it it just it fell away. It fell away, and I just I, I couldn't I couldn't get up in the mornings. I'd, I'd, I was just going through such a bad situation. I, I, it, it was really, it was really crazy because I'd, at the time all this was happening, I ended up developing epilepsy, which was I don't know how on earth this ended up coming, which was another thing that I was struggling with. So I was waking up, I was having epileptic fits. It was, it was just, it, it was. I just, I just want, didn't want to want to be around any longer, and I felt that the only way was 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 to sort of take my own life and and leave everything that I'd made a mess of. When it gets to the point where you think, I, I don't want to be around anymore, and you said in another interview I read that it maybe happened five or six times yeah. that you tried to, to take your own life, is it, or was it a case that there'd be one thing that would happen that day which would sort of top it off, or what was it, a mindset that you woke up in the morning and you thought, that's it, this is the day? Yeah. <laughs> It, it, it was it was a number of things because of the you know there was letters coming through the door that I'd have to face and open you know and and there weren't just off you know one debt collector there was one two three and four because I, I physically didn't have the money to pay it I'd finished football at times or if I was still playing football I didn't have the money to pay them because I was trying to sell properties to to take money in so I could pay people off and. Um, yeah, th there was always a trigger point for me that 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 made that made me think that, and you know, I, my mum's situation w was one that always stands out. Is that I had the letter saying that mum's house was being repossessed in a a certain amount of time, um, and don't get me wrong, she knew that things weren't right and things were in the balance of stuff, and I was trying to sort things out, but. When when I had a, a, a sort of two week period where she had to get out or three week period I think it was. That was the, that was the, that was the point where I, I was embarrassed to even tell her that I was, I was heartbroken, that, 
my mum was going to be homeless. That you know, I'd, I'd put my money and 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 time into trying to help what she'd done for me as a kid. Um, and you know, even you know now it, it just it makes me well up because I've just. You know, my mum was upset, obviously, because she loved that house. Um, and I, I'd always said to my to my mum, my nan, because they'd looked after me so much, and my dad, uh, of course, um, that I always wanted to buy my house, which I did. Um, and, you know, mum's house was, was up first to go, and it was, it was, it was hard. It was hard, but there was always a trigger point with, with me that, Things like that had come through the door, and I just felt that I, I couldn't, I couldn't do anything about it. I was, I was, my hands were tied. You know, I couldn't speak to people about it because people knew about it. It was in the paper. It was. I didn't want to go outside. I didn't want to go to the shop because I was embarrassed. I was embarrassed, and you know, it's took me a while to build. I wouldn't even say my confidence is anywhere near it. It has been, but. It took a while for me to, to, to build that confidence back up from, from being in that situation because still to this day, I, I, I dread to think that anyone would ask me about bankruptcy and, you know, what happened and how. And do you know what? Sometimes I, I think speaking about it, well, it, it, there's no doubt about it, not sometimes speaking about it, it does make me feel, it does make me feel like a human being. It makes me feel normal, which... I've always wanted to be normal, even when I put that villa shirt on, even when I went to the shop, even when I seen people in Birmingham when I was shopping, I wanted to be normal. And, you know, with the, the fame that comes with, with being a professional footballer, you know, you, you've always got that, that big thing that lies around you that you are a, a someone in the public eye who, who people look up to. When you've, you've tried to take your own life and, and then you obviously wake up in hospital and, and obviously, it becomes clear to you that it, it hasn't worked. What are your emotions then moving forward? Um, I mean, the, there's, I mean, the times where I've woke up in hospital and I think, I mean, you know, the times that I've, I've, I've tried to take my own life, I, I've, I've wanted to do it. There's, there's no doubt of that. There's, you know, I, I, I've, I've always, I've always looked and thought, if I'm going to do that, I've got, I'm going to do it properly. I, I've got to make sure because you know I don't want to ever wake up and 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 not be able to walk or not be able to speak or and and that was that was what I was putting myself. I was putting myself under a a massive situation where that could have easily happened. I could have been brain damaged. I could have been anything. It could have been anything. Um, but. You know, seeing my family there um, and waking up, I actually thought I actually thought I died. I actually did um, because I was really I was delirious. I was I was seeing things, and I was I was I was I mean I wasn't right. I'd been on a, a sort of life support machine for I think it was six or seven days at the time, um, and when I woke up, it was. It was it was hard. It was hard because everyone was in tears. Everyone was there. It was it was it was it was it was it was horrible. It was scary. It was scary. And I, I was at the time. I, I don't know if I was happy. I don't know if I was sad. I just I just I can't. I can only just recall certain things of that that situation. But I, I just wanted to get out of hospital then and. Um, you know, mum, dad, you know, obviously they, they were all there to comfort me, but um, I think when I started to come round, I just knew that I, I, it was going to happen again. And they were all suddenly telling me, this can't happen, it can't happen again, it can't, you can't do this. And, you know, you've, you've put yourself in a, a situation, we'll get, it, we'll get it resolved, we can sort things out. And I would always be that, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. And I'd always, I would, I would lie to him. I would lie to him. I'm, I'll sit here and, and tell the truth. Is that I would lie to him, saying that, okay, I'll go and seek help. I'll, I'll get this situation sorted. I, I knew I wasn't going to. I knew I wasn't going to because I knew there was more to come. Um, and that was just, 
because it was such a big load to take on at the time. I knew it was just going to be a matter of time and then I said drink just it just brings it all back all back flowing back out and and then the the, the next time I did it where I I woke up and no one was there was was really really scary it was just it was it was really scary for me because I just rem I remember it so so clear it was it was dark uh, there was a big glass front where the nurse was sat in front at reception and I woke up and I kept hearing people talking to me. It was it was it was the scariest thing that I've, I've ever ever gone through. You know, it was the hallucinations that I was having was just it was it was the f frightening it really was because I just didn't know what to do. I would I just wanted to get out of there and I wanted to get around my family, um, and that made me think a lot about it. It really did, it really did. So, you know. I'm not saying that it helps, but it certainly made me think a lot more about doing it, and that's for sure. Would it be fair to say that I think sometimes the way people who suffer from, from mental health problems would sort of describe it as being wired maybe a little bit differently, and that, that when you're there in hospital, or, or even when you've got to the point where you go back home and your family are saying, please don't do this again, and we can't bear to be that, we, you know, we'll, we'll get you help, that you just process it a little bit differently and you almost think, well, they don't mean it or it, it doesn't go in and process the way it would with people who, who maybe don't have those demons inside their heads. I, th I think so, I, I really do. And, and I think that, you know, the, the, the mental health situations, this is why, it, it, you know, we, don't, we just don't know how, how things are gonna turn out. and. I think sometimes it's down to the person, the strength of the person, the the mindset of the person, because you know your mom, dad, wife, they can all tell you, you know, don't do this again, don't do this again. But it, it's it's not as e it's not as easy, it's not as easy as that. It's it's you know it's it, it's really hard to explain because the only way that you that that's not going to happen is if they take all this mess and rubbish and go and clear it away. Going and seeing someone professionally made me feel a lot better because I wasn't a burden on them. I was speaking to my family and friends, I felt like I was. And you leave a lot of pressure on them then and, and a lot of onus on them to, to try and help you. But going and speaking to someone professionally for me was, was the icebreaker because it wasn't someone that was close to me, it wasn't someone I knew. You didn't think that they would think, oh, it's just Lee moaning again? Exactly, exactly. And it made me feel better. And it was amazing because going to my first initial appointment, I pulled up there and turned away because I was, I was embarrassed to go in and, and actually speak to someone. Um, and I told everyone that I went and seen someone they believed me and I, the letter come through the door saying I hadn't turned up for an appointment so I was lying again I was in denial so I had no choice I had to go and, and going was 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 the best thing I could have done you know it was emotional I went through my past I went through my childhood and it felt good it felt good it really did I said it wasn't gonna it wasn't gonna change things overnight but you know, it certainly made me face things a lot more different. It made me see things differently uh, on that small process of moving forward. Just want to talk about the game as a whole. Obviously, players and ex-players coming out and doing interviews and talking about the struggles is is good, and it raises awareness and it maybe encourages other people to do that. But does the Premier League, the Football League, the PFA need to be doing more? Whether it's players in the game or players out of the game and finished to support people in terms of, of preserving mental health? I can't speak enough about this situation, that, that it's something that's got to, got to change in, in, in sport, football in particular, obviously me playing football and, and, and being in situations that I've been through. I think it's, it's got to be and I think it's got to stem through every football club. You can go through a football club and you can look at 
the, the, the staff that they have on board, which is state of the art. You know, it's, it, the, the, they've got dietitians, you know, certain technicians for certain areas. You know, they've got every single thing that you can really and truly think about. Have they got in place something for mental health, for people to speak to? For I don't think they have. I really don't. And I do, I do think it's, it's got to happen. It really has. The, the PFA have got to, to look further into, into situations of getting into football clubs. They've got to, you know, I, I, I feel that they've got to have people that can relate to being in the game, being in situations, playing at the top level, who can relate and put their, a story across. You know, I'm not just saying myself, the likes of Paul Merson, you know, we, there's lots of players that have gone through situations and, and, and found themselves in, in, in a deep, dark place. And I feel that that has got to be a, a big key factor in football clubs, that they're going in, speaking to players and, and, and actually giving them a little bit of guidance where they can have one-to-ones with them. You know, they, Would you want to do that in, in an official capacity if a club or if, if, for example, the PFA came to you and said, Lee, be be that guy, would that be something that you would feel comfortable doing? Totally, totally would. And, and you know, I, I, like I said to you, is, is, is speaking about things, it does make me feel better. And I think the response I've had since I've spoke about situations, you would not believe the amount of ex-footballers footballers, cricketers, boxers that have spoke to me about situations that they've gone through. And that is just me having a conversation. So I know it's opened up a lot of eyes and not just sports people. I'm, I've had thousands of messages about what certain people have gone through, families they've gone through. And I just feel that it, it's, got to, it's got to be something that's got to be done. And I'd certainly, certainly love to be a part of that because you know, going back to that lying in bed, sitting around, that would that would make me feel on top of the world, knowing that I've helped someone, and not let that person go in a situation that I actually went through, and and try and avoid that process because I'm an honest person and I wear my heart on my sleeve. You know, and I feel that I've got a story to tell, which. You know, it's not something that I'm, I'm, I'm proud of sitting here, but if it's going to help the man next to me, then it'd be great to go into a football club and, and actually do that and, and put it through a, a system where, you know, I can have a conversation with people about stuff and, and, and then not have to worry about a thing. I just wanted to finish with this. We've spoken about how you perceived yourself and, and how you, you felt embarrassed about telling people and how you thought people might think. So I thought I'd read you a few of these yeah. from what I could find. Hopefully Hendry realises he's not to blame and can move on. Seems a top guy. Lee Hendry, be proud of the fact that you spoke about your mental health and hopefully you have inspired more people to do the same. It's good to talk. I wanted to message you to say you are amazing. The relentless battle you've been fighting every moment of every day. I hope you can refocus your energy and realise how much you have and how wonderful life is. You'll like this one to finish. <laughs> Words I never thought I'd say as a blue nose. 100% <laughs> earn my respect after watching you speak out. If anything, does that convince you you've done the right thing by talking about it and, yeah, and it still does. being it here does. today? It does. Yeah, it does. It's, it's, <clears throat> it's touching when, you, when you, you read things like that because, you know, I mean, even a Birmingham City fan there stating that is, you know, it, 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 kind, kind words that, you know, you just, you just think that I hope that, that I've set a message there for, for people to come out and, you know, that embarrassment factor of reading messages, you reading the messages out there, it does make me feel a hell of a lot better that, that I can move forward and it's, it's amazing. Two, three messages like that can make you feel a lot better about yourself and I'm, I'm glad you know that I've, I've been fortunate to sit here and tell the story and hopefully I can I can I can help others because all the messages that I've received you know 
I look through them and I, I want to reply to every single person. There's thousands and thousands and it's, it's, it's difficult to do that. But everything's appreciated and it wouldn't go amiss. I try and read every single thing that I, I can. And I've had so much positive, you know, come back from, from this situation. And, you know, I'm pleased that I'm pleased it's going to help someone, if not a lot of people out there.